Hello everyone, if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you know that I'm not in my usual place. Usually I'm in my office slash bedroom, but today I'm coming to you from my living room because I want to talk to you about a verse from Proverbs that my small group, which meets here in my living room, that we recently discussed. But it's not just this verse, it's its twin verse as well. And I've got to say, they're pretty heartbreaking. You know that I love the book of Proverbs in the Bible. It is a collection of wisdom, mostly from King Solomon. And that's what my small group is covering for the months of April and May. We've had some really good discussion over these verses and have really tried to just dig down into what it means to truly live a life of wisdom. Now in Proverbs chapter 1, it begins with King Solomon talking to the reader as if the reader were his son. But then there's a switch that happens in verse 20 where Solomon stops using that literary device, talking to the reader as if the reader is his son, and switches to personifying wisdom, making wisdom into a person so that wisdom itself can talk directly to mankind. Solomon personifies wisdom as a woman. Ladies, go ahead and take a victory lap for this one that the Bible makes wisdom a woman. Now, as a sidebar, I do find it interesting that the first and last chapters of Proverbs, we see women featured prominently. In chapter one, wisdom is a woman, and in chapter 31, the wise and virtuous woman is celebrated. Let me just say, I have an amazing wise and virtuous wife, and I'm very thankful for her. Now, back to what we were talking about. In those last verses of chapter 1, wisdom calls out to people to turn to her and become wise and therefore live a life that goes better for them. Unfortunately, the simpleton, the fool, the mocker, they all reject her, and she tells them that calamity will certainly come into their life. And this leads into one of the most heartbreaking verses, verse 31. Therefore, because they have rejected wisdom, they must eat the bitter fruit of living their own way. This verse gets me, not just on a truth level, but on a personal level. Let's first talk truth. There's this idea all throughout Scripture that we reap what we sow. This truth is so universal in this Western world that we live in that we may not have even known that it was a Bible thing, but it is. We actually see this most clearly in Galatians 6 when Paul writes explicitly about it. He says, Don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You will always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. So let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. What's he saying? Just as a farmer doesn't plant tomato seeds and hope for corn, so we can't plant negative, sinful, and ungodly things in our lives and expect our life to honor God and for things to go well for us. This violates the law of reaping and sowing. We plant, we harvest. There is no escaping this. That's why Paul says you cannot mock the justice of God. So let's go back to Proverbs 131. We see this law play out. If we plant living our own way into the soil of our lives, we harvest the bitter fruit. And that leads me to talk about this on a personal level. As many of you know, I'm a pastor and have been for about 15 years now. And in that decade and a half, the most heartbreaking moments are when I'm talking with someone and they're pouring out their heart and all the regrets that they've racked up in their life and they just, they just want it to stop. They're broken. Their relationships are broken. And they just want some magic words that can make it all better in an instant. But Proverbs 131 is a heartbreaking truth. If you lived your life your own way, that you ignore God's way of doing things, you must eat the bitter fruit, and there's no quick way of repairing the damage. You must replant with seeds of repentance, doing things God's way and seeking forgiveness, and then wait for that crop to grow. So what do we do with this? Two things. First, we've got to stop blaming other people. You will never grow in wisdom and improve your life if you constantly play the victim. Do you want the truth? I want the truth! I'll give it to you straight. You need to stop planting the wrong things into your life if you don't want a bitter harvest. At the very beginning, I mentioned that this verse has a twin. It's Proverbs 19.3. People ruin their lives by their own foolishness and then are angry at the Lord. Look, don't blame God for your poor decisions. 
Wisdom was calling out to you, and you ignored her. It was largely your choices that led you to where you are today. Now, you can put a fake Christian spin on it and say, well, I believe everything happens for a reason, even my poor choices. Look, I'm not discounting that God is in control, so don't hear me saying otherwise. Everything does happen for a reason. And sometimes that reason is that you made really bad, dumb decisions. Now, I know that's a painful truth, but the truth hurts. But it can also set you free. You can't sow foolishness and expect to reap a well-lived life. Number two, start planting wise things. Seek wisdom in God's Word. And then, and this is critical, start living that way. Repent of your sin. Walk the narrow path of wisdom in obedience to God's commands. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind and seek forgiveness from those that you've wronged. This is a whole new batch of seeds that you'll be planting in the ground. Will they produce fruit overnight? No, but neither did your foolish seeds. Plant and keep planting. Water and keep watering. And then at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. Looks like the winds are changing. Ah, change is good. Yeah, but it's not easy. I know what I have to do, but going back means I'll have to face my past. I've been running from it for so long. Ow! Jeez, what was that for? It doesn't matter. It's in the past. <laughs> yeah, but it still hurts. Oh, yes, the past can hurt. But the way I see it, you can either run from it or learn from it ah you see so what are you going to do first i'm gonna take your stick no 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 not your stick hey i hope you learned something in this video if you did would you please consider sharing it and be sure to subscribe on youtube so that you can catch the next video when it drops special thanks to channel sponsor lifeword be sure to check out all the great things that they're doing at lifeword.org see you next time grace and peace